being a little person, you know, it's kind of hard to find a guitar that fits you and everything. So I just adapted to a normal size guitar. I was like, okay. And most of my life, like, you know, I adapted to everything, you know, like, because yeah. it was like, I didn't, I didn't really want things made special for me. I just wanted to feel like normal, just like everyone else. It was just like, you know, okay, I'm just a little shorter than everyone. I'll just go about this, like, whatever. What's up, everyone? Welcome back to the See Through Podcast, a podcast that creates transparency on life with a disability through raw conversations with the disability community. I'm your host, Lance Johnson, and I live in podcast with the eye disease, retinitis pigmentosa, In this episode, I talk with Vinny Rupolo, a super cool dude who is living out in Los Angeles. Vinny and I, we talk about his podcast. We talk about anxiety, the old heavy metal bands he played guitar in, the appropriate language you should use to describe people in the dwarfism community, and just some overall great insights on life as a little person. But before our interview begins, make sure you subscribe to the podcast follow on social media the handle is at see through pod and if you want bonus episodes and exclusive content go ahead and join the see through few over on patreon the link is in the show description enjoy this episode everyone Vinny Rupolo, welcome to the See Through Podcast. What's up, dude? Long time coming, bro. <laughs> One of those pronunciations, I got it. I got it down. Yeah, you got it. Rupolo, you got it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, thanks for talking with me today, man. I've, I've uh, haven't done an interview in a bit because, like, I was doing a batch recording kind of process for the longest time. So I'm, wor- I'm going to be working off some like interviewing rust but uh i'm excited to talk to you oh yeah I'm, i've been waiting for this man i was like yo yeah. i gotta do this gotta do this and like our our, our friend emma who yeah we both interviewed with and everything like that was fun and she was like wait do you you know work with lance and i was like hell yeah i gotta do this <laughs> yeah 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 she i think i saw your ep- she posted your episode and i was like oh yeah i was like Vinny seems like a cool dude and oh, I was yeah. like, I have to talk to him. But it's like, again, I got to time these, you know, because it's like, just like you, you're squeezing in podcasts to your schedule. And like, right. Right. Uh, so sometimes that's how it is. Like, you know, like, oh, I want to talk to that person, but you may not actually talk to them for till two months later. Right. Because you have to yeah. fit it into your schedule. Everything. Yeah, no, yeah. I totally get it, bro. <laughs> yeah. Well, again, thanks for squeezing me into your schedule. Hell yeah. Um, you're in uh, L.A., right? Yeah. Los Are you from L.A.? No, I'm originally from Massachusetts. So oh. I grew up in a little town in Massachusetts called Rehoboth. Uh, it's literally like the border of Rhode Island. And so it's just oh. like some people are like, so, but some people think Rhode Island is Long Island. So I just don't even bother <laughs> explaining. Yeah, I'm yeah. like, yeah, no. And so, yeah, Massachusetts, yeah. born and raised. And yeah, I came out to L.A. in... What was it? Uh, winter of 2015. And, you know, I didn't come out with like, I had a plan, but like, not really. You know what I mean? It was just more like, I'll figure it out when I get there. And, yeah. you know, I did, I, I, I was working for, um, what's it, Guitar Center at the okay. time. And I was like able to, you know, just switch stores. So I was like, okay, well, that gives me my income. I can do that. And, you know, I already had a couple of friends out here, uh, including, like, my childhood best friend who I would come out and visit, like, you know, twice a year. And um, he was like, dude, why don't you just make the move? Like, why don't you just do it? You know, there's so much opportunity out here for you and everything. And, like, just just see what happens. Like, if you don't like it, you move back, whatever. So I remember, I'll never forget, I remember it was like, uh, the last snowstorm I ever had to deal with it's, uh, March of 2015 I remember calling my mom and just being like yo this is it 
like yeah, I'm good. Like this is my <laughs> last this is my last winter in Massachusetts for a while and like, you know, if not my the rest of my life because yeah, it's just too much, you know, and like and you know, with my condition um and the many surgeries that I've had, I it winter is hard, you know, it's like Oh yeah. It it makes you you know, you get crazy seasonal depression. You're in a lot of pain with like, you know, arthritis and just different different struggles that you have. So I was just like, yo, I need to be in a warmer climate. That was another way to get out here. <laughs> um, and I don't know, I just need to like figure my life out. And like, you know, being, being back home in Massachusetts and just New England overall, it was amazing. And there's so many amazing people there, but... I just think ever, ever since I was a little kid, I always wanted to like strive to do and go go somewhere else and go bigger, go, go bigger, go home, I guess you could say. Yeah. And and so that brought me out here, man. And it's, you know, it's just been a crazy, crazy ride ever since. Yeah, that's kind of similar to me. Like I grew up in North Carolina and then I made the move to New York City when I was 27. Oh, yeah. But for the longest time, I was planning like, all right, I'm gonna move somewhere. I just, you know, right. but, and uh, you know, I, I'm a video editor, so I was like, there's a lot of work here. So yeah, similar thing, you know, like just kind of wanting to change a scenery, change a pace, more opportunity. Yeah. Yep. Uh, you know, it comes. It's pros and cons because like sometimes living in like a large city, I'm sure, you know, you get some wild, uh, some you're in some wild situations. Like I'm in always seeing some crazy shit here in new york um so but uh it's fun though it keeps you on your (laughs) it does keeps you on your toes and like that's what keeps life amazing you know what i mean like and that though i feel like you know like for people like me and you it's just like you know we we always had this plan to get out and move to like a bigger city get out of like our shell and like our bubble and like do this and like it's just like in situations like that, you get to experience so much more crazy stuff, like you just said, but, like, you also, like, learn from it, you know, whether it be, like, for example, like, L.A. has a ton of homelessness yeah. out here, you know what I mean? And, like, we're dealing with a lot of that right now, and it's just, like, you, you know, you, you learn from that, and you also, like, realize that, like, damn, these cities that both of us live in are so expensive, so it's, like, you see for example like you see the homelessness and you're like man these people came out here and tried to do exactly what i'm doing but like they struggled a little bit more you know what i mean with different stuff and it's just like you kind of like it's almost with me it's almost like you know loving the mental health like study and everything i just want to like talk to everyone be like how did you get here you know what i mean like what did you get here like was it hard to live in LA is that why you're now homeless or is it just like you know different circumstances and like it's it's crazy man it's so so crazy and like um there's so many things you learn and overcome with living away from family and also in a big city and you know that that's that's what I'm like actually like love doing in life is just learning and networking and meeting people like that too you know yeah, same, same. Yeah, I always am curious about that because I, whenever, this is probably maybe, I don't know if it's the best comment to make, but it's like, I always wonder why when I see a lot of homeless people in New York and I'm like, if I were homeless, I would go somewhere like LA where the weather's right. nicer because it's brutal here in the winter and I'm just like, mm-hmm. yeah, I don't know. But yeah, it's, it's, it's always, <sighs> the homeless thing, I don't know. I don't even know how, I don't even know my, I don't even know what to think of that. You know, I don't know. How. Mm, it's crazy. So it's like, it's like, yeah. But yeah, it's, it's, I guess at the very least, it's the best to just kind of, um, be respectful and just kind of be, uh, grateful for what you have is all, you, is all right, I can say, exactly. I guess. But, exactly. uh, all right. So you're out in LA. You move from Massachusetts. Um, I saw one thing I want to bring up. You play guitar, and you yes. said you worked at Guitar Center, and I seen that you were in a yeah. band. Yeah. So I um, so I started playing guitar like as a little kid. 
you know, my dad, like, got me a little, like, junior guitar. I'm sure a lot of us had at one point in our life. And yeah, yeah. it was, like, one of those things where I didn't take it super seriously. And, you know, I kind of just was like, okay, let's do this, you know? Like, once I started going through middle school and I went through my skateboarding phase and, like, everything, where it was just like, okay. And then once I hit high school, it was like everyone, like, got into the whole, like, pop punk metal and like all, all that whole scene and I was loving it and I, I was a part of it too so it was just like yo I'm gonna try guitar again and everything and <clears throat> being a little person you know it's kind of hard to find a guitar that fits you and everything so I just adapted to a normal size guitar I was like okay and most of my life like you know I adapted to everything you know like because it was like I didn't I didn't really want things made special for me I just wanted to feel like normal just like everyone Mm -hmm. else it was just like you know okay I'm just a little shorter than everyone I'll just go about this like whatever you know and I'll play an average size guitar whatever so from there in like high school and stuff when I started like you know really buckling down and like teaching myself and also taking lessons like I just started songwriting and from there it was like I was like oh man like I want to start a band you know like and like I was looking up to all these like different heavy metal bands like Metallica um you know Glassjaw like so many different bands and I just like was like how do I do this how do I do this like being a little person like how can I do this and I just started like a band in high school and it was like a three piece. I played guitar. We had a drummer and a bassist and I sang as well. And I was just like, oh, well, I'll just go for it. Like, whatever. Yeah, yeah. You know, played like basements and like bars and like, no, not bars, but like Legion Halls. I was yeah, yeah. I wasn't even 18 yet. And yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I like I like did that for a while. And then once like my senior year of high school, I I really strive to like have people take me seriously with music because that's also another thing that comes with like, you know, being a little person sometimes is like, you don't feel like you're taken seriously all the time when you want to do like average height activities, when you want to do like a career in like the average height world, you feel like you have to like really, really, really like show yourself and like, Mm -hmm. instead of just being like, yeah, like, you know, I can do this, whatever. It's like, no, like, that that's how I that's how I felt at the time. So once I was a senior in high school, I started like another band um, with some of my best friends from surrounding cities, and um, we just went from there. Like from there, like we were a band for eight years. We we toured um, all around the world. And what's the name you of know, your band? Uh, it was called Auburn. So it was like a metalcore band. Um, When you type in Auburn, it never comes up because it's a million Auburn things. So it's just like so hard to find. But like it's on there. It's on the streaming site somewhere. But um, it's it was one of those things that like, you know, being in a band and having my like, you know, bandmates and everything and like even people at shows like treating me like an actual individual that was a huge part of me growing up in music and okay. that that was like my savior you know it was just like holy shit like i found what i love to do and nothing was going to stop me like nothing and so at that point in my life like you know i hadn't really met like other little people and mm-hmm. i i had just met like a couple they would come to like you know I had a couple friends that were, uh, like, around the same height as me, like, come to shows and, like, introduce themselves. But I never, like, really put myself in, like, the little person world. Like, they have little yeah. people of America. And I remember growing up, my mom would always be like, hey, do you want to, like, go to these functions or anything? And, like, when I was a teenager, I didn't because I, I was just, like, like I said earlier, like, you know, I didn't want to be seen as like something else like you know what I mean I was like no I'm just a little shorter than everyone this is how it is you know yeah so I think 
as I, you know, grew up toward and like realized more and more every day that like, you know, I, I, I am different. I am, um, I did grow up with this condition, you know, and I did go like through a bunch of stuff to get here. You know, I think it's like one of those things where I just like really realized like who I was through playing music and having like, you know, people talking to me about it as well. You know, like, okay. being like hey, like, you know, like, is that a smaller guitar? Is that like, is it harder for you to like carry gear and like different things? And obviously it, it would be harder because like, you know, to carry gear and stuff because like I'm not that tall. So it's just like, yeah, like I need help with this, this and this. And it's just like, okay, uh, well, that's really cool. Like, you know, and then growing like, you know, as the band grew, you know, and the internet grew, you kind of had people writing about you, making fun of you, you know, like different articles. Like um, I, one that stuck out to me was like midget core is the new the new hardcore music. And it was just like at the time it made me laugh. But like it's like now that like I'm older, I'm like, damn, people were ruthless. Like, you know, like, yeah, you can just like, you know, give me like a chance to just show myself and stuff like that. So I think, I think through like, you know, playing guitar and playing music is where I started to really, really, really get to know myself. And, you know, that, that actually all start like kind of not stopped, but like kind of put it on hold in the beginning of 2013 when I had a crazy back surgery. I had to get like a lumbar laminectomy from like my L1 down to my tailbone because I was losing feeling in my legs and pretty much I wasn't able to walk. I wasn't able to like stand for longer than five minutes and my legs would just go numb and everything. And I was just like, dude, what the hell? Like I want to, you know, I want to rock and like everything. And it just yeah. kind of like, kind of really put a damper on everything and I think like the year the year leading up to everything when I really realized that something was wrong I was getting like drunk at every show in order to play you know and it was just like oh yeah. my god like I don't want to do this I don't want to ruin myself like, I don't like what just drunk. for like the uh the effects of the alcohol in terms of just kind yeah, of pain relief exactly yeah. exactly and like I didn't I didn't have like you know like painkillers or anything like that I didn't want to get near that stuff and it was just like okay well this will help me get through the performance and then I'll be fine after and like it, it was just like it was it was it was a weird weird time you know so that's when after my surgery I I was in rehab for like just learning how to walk again and everything for about a month and a half and from there it's just like I I really honed in on like my health and my life. And I was like, yo, like now that you know that like, you know, you're a little person and like you are different and you do you are unique in different ways, like you really need to hone in on like your actual health and like get get help with certain things. And like so I did that and from there is where like, you know, my mission was to like move to California. You know, I started visiting and everything and like, you know, going out and like meeting with people when I, when I was out here and like, you know, just figuring it out. And like I told you earlier, like when I worked at Guitar Center, it was just like an easy, easy way to get out here to make money and like whatever. Even if it was minimum yeah. wage, I was like, OK, at least I got something coming in and I'll yeah. work towards like other things. So I, I did that and... You know, I once I moved out here, it, it just my life changed so fast. And also, like, I it was just like, what the hell? Like, you know, like it, it just like you felt more. I felt more accepted because I grew up in a small town in Massachusetts, and there weren't any other really little people. You know, yeah. within the like eight other towns around me. Maybe one or two, but like it was like you'd never really see. But when you move to a big city like LA, 
you know, there's all different sorts of people with dwarfism, you know, and everything. And you're like, oh, hey, like, we can talk about this. I actually have people out here I can talk to about this and like everything else. So I think from there, it's just like when I realized like, hey, now you have a network. Now you need to talk and like figure out what you need to do, what you could do to help people about with your experiences, but also like, you know, figure out what you want to do with your life, you know? And so like it, as being such an expensive city and like everything that, that stuff didn't matter to me at, at the point. I was like, no, you know, whatever, I'll figure it out. I'll figure out the money stuff, but like, I just need to figure out like my life right now. And I think going from there, like, there was just so endless possibilities. Like I did, what was it like May? So I moved here November of 2015. And in May of 2016, I had, uh, I was casting for a um, TLC show, like a little person TLC show. Okay. And I, I was really against like all that stuff very against it all just because like with the ex- with the exploitation that they do with little people on those networks I was just like really against it and like um <clears throat> the the casting director who's actually one of my best friends still to this day um found me and he was like dude I have this idea um and we found you because you know of your band and you know what someone at the network loves you, loves your music, et cetera, et cetera. And I was like, oh shit, what's up? And like, they were like, listen, we're doing this show for little people. It's going to fo- follow millennials and like, you know, go throughout their careers and what they want in life and like everything. And I was like, oh shit. I was like, okay, but like, is it going to exploit like this, this, and this, which is like, you know, my personal life, like, dating and like all that stuff and like like oh just a little bit but not really like we want to focus more on the good and it was just like i was all for it so i was like i was like all right let's see what happens and like you know moving forward let's say eight months later we started filming and it was the exact opposite everything was just like a, a lie <laughs> and like I was just like dude I thought this was like supposed to be about like you know me because I had a band back home in Massachusetts at the time and I was like you know doing like recordings by Coastal and like I you know working out here like a minimum wage job and I was just like okay like this is what I do but I want to be in a band and I want to keep making music so it was like they made they made that into a whole like devastating thing like where they wanted me to quit the band to like be more like oh i'm living in la now like fuck all that shit back home like you know like i'm living the life out here and like it was like dude no way no way and like <clears throat> Being a part of that and meeting other little people on the show made me really, really want to put myself more into the little people of America world, you know, put myself more into like learning about others like myself and like everything. So I started going to conventions from there and then um, like, what was it? Like I went to one convention where I met like a ton of other people like myself and I I just asked so many questions and I was just like, yo, like tell me about this. Have you had, had have you had this experience in your life, this and this and this? And it was like, Yeah, dude, like I have that too. Like, you know, we have this and this and I'm like, whoa <laughs> you know, so it was it was really cool and like um yeah, I just like it's been such a such a trip, dude. I know I just went on for yeah. like ever, but like it's been such a trip. <laughs> no, that that's cool. Now that gives me a lot of uh, a lot of stuff to work with, actually. Yeah. In terms of you know where this conversation is gonna go. Yeah. But it's like 
I, I feel you on finding a community because it took me a while. I didn't, like, growing up, the only person I knew with my eye condition was my mom, you know, mm-hmm. so it's like I didn't have any, you know, visually impaired friends or legally blind, low vision friends. And then I moved to New York and then I'm, I'm kind of wanting, you know, I was kind of avoiding it, to be honest with you, that whole world. Right. I was just kind of like, ah, I'm not a part of that world, you know, mm-hmm. like I, I can see decent enough. And then, mm-hmm. and then like something just clicked with me. I think my vision was declining and I can notice it. And I was like, I need to prepare for my future. And like, I need to like talk to people who, who are legally blind and see how they, you know, how they adapt to, to things in life. So that's why I started this podcast. And ever since I started that podcast, I talked to people and I'm like, Oh, just like what you said, you, you experienced that too. You experienced that. And then, and right. then I talked to what's kind of neat about it is just, you're a perfect example of that. Cause like I experienced that myself. Like I joined the, the community and then I was like, Oh wow. It's nice to, to meet people who are experience, who have experienced similar things. Mm-hmm. And you think it's just your community, right? Like people, it'd be like the, li- the little people community or the retinitis pigmentosa community. But then when, when I started talking to people, because on this podcast, I talked to anyone with a disability, that it's the same thing. And there's all this crossover with like, no matter really what your disability is, um, that seems to be a universal thing, is, right. uh, is uh, just kind of, we've all been through similar things like, and I think that's something that gets overlooked because I think a lot of people in the disability community just kind of stay in their right. lane, you know, and like, you know, but it's, I think, you know, me branching out and talking, you know, I've talked to plenty of people who are, who would, with low vision, but I've also talked to plenty of people with, you know, who are wheelchair users or have, you know, some sort of muscular dystrophy. Uh, I've talked to Toria Jones from just a little pod. I'm not sure if you're familiar with her. And, yeah. 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 Uh, and, uh, but it's neat to kind of learn about it and kind of throw myself into this world because it, one, it makes me feel a little bit more understood and, uh, that's always good. Right. And you feel like you have right. a community of people who are accepting and also understanding because, uh, even for example, you moved to LA where, you know, there's more people, you know, like you, you still probably feel like an outsider sometimes. I mean, look at your shirt, you know what I mean? It's, it's like, uh, <laughs> yeah. But it's it's like uh, so it's neat to like you know I don't know that's that's just what I take from that and then also uh, the TLC thing is that what it was the channel was TLC yeah 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 did that ever go live or anything like that so to to go back on that um, when we were filming I uh, I put my foot down with a lot of stuff. And like, you know, I yeah. was like, no, this is fake. This isn't real, you know? And I tried to get, I tried to get like a bunch of like good things, like the positive stuff. And like, yeah. you know, I would refuse to fake anything, like anything like that. And the outcome of doing all that got me kicked off the show. But I could yeah. own, I was, I was able to be a guest star on the show and the cover of the show. <laughs> So it was weird. I was on the, I was like on the cover of it, just me and one other cast member, and then I like, yeah, I was, I was, not, I like, they still were able to like compensate me and everything, but yeah. it, it was just like my story never got told or anything, and like it was just like, yeah. you know what, like I'd rather only be known as that. That's fine. You know what I mean? Um, you can do things the way you want, like how most networks do but the thing was like I remember when I got that phone call I remember asking and telling them and just letting the network know I was like you know you should really start thinking about thinking about making shows through the eye of someone who goes through this every single day someone lives with this condition with everything because you're never actually going to get the true meaning of it all until you do that you know like you know it, it it's just something that like I think a lot of TV shows for a lot of different conditions need you know because they're not they're writing scripts for like and writing plots of like everything when you're like dude that's not how my life goes and that's not my daily experience 
that may be yeah. what you see from like other people's movies or TV shows, uh-huh. but it's like, it's like, no, it's like, I deal with this disability every day. Um, and I love my life. Like, you know, and it's not a bad thing, you know, it's just like, but they automatically want to make the, the sad story out of you and like everything. Yeah. And it's just like, yo, I want to help the people that are going through this and struggling through this. Like, yeah. instead of feeling like, oh, you should feel bad for me and like all this stuff. It's like, no, 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 no. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. And that's what, you know, that's what really like, you know, drove me into podcasting and, yeah. you know, document like, documentaries and like working on those with like my friends and like you know just figuring out like how you can really tell a true meaningful story about the people who go through all different sorts of disabilities just like you're doing as well you know yeah. and it's just like you this stuff needs to be more like light needs to be more shined on it you know and like it's it's every day that, like, you know, I feel like we're getting a little bit closer, you know, to, like, you know, normalizing certain things. But, like, we still got a ways to go. And yeah. um, I actually got really excited this past Christmas because, for example, like, uh, there was a little boy in a Best Buy ad who had dwarfism. Uh, achondroplasia which is the same type of a dwarfism I have and mm-hmm. it was just like holy shit they're doing it like they're really doing it like and I worked like back in the day I worked at Best Buy at a re- like for like a couple of years yeah. and it was just like wow like you know like a company that I liked working for but also like you know left like it was like damn they 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 did it like they went and did it and like so that that was really cool to see and it made me feel like okay things are going in the right direction and everything else but you know just with everything the way it is now like you kind of just hope for the best and you know you, you you try and do everything you can and that's why like with this podcast that I'm doing anxious youth like it's just I want to talk about, you know, the mental health behind disability and also the mental health behind, like, anyone, you know? And, like, what's the story behind it? What did we all go through to get to where we are today? You know, what demons did we fight? What, like, like, what PTSD do we have in certain situations that, like, we can't get past, you know? And, like, there's so many different stories that so many that every individual has to tell. And a lot of, yeah. and I feel like it's coming out more and more. People are starting to normalize, you know, a lot of disability, a lot of, you know, anxiety, everything, and mental illness. And I feel like people are coming out more, but there's still so many people that just feel, are so scared to just say anything. So scared to, like, say, like, that they're, like, they want to cry, you know, that they feel emotional, mm-hmm. that they feel something. That they that that like a situation makes them feel something, and it's just like, dude, just let it out, like you know, because that shit can eat you up, and like, and that was you know, I also dealt with that like as a teenager and going through my twenties, you know, and like also to this day, you know, and like, I think it's just like, we're on the road to get normalcy in it but like we're not there yet so it's just like the that's why like you know it's good that people like you and me are doing these and opening the conversations to all kinds of different people you know and and just going from there yeah <laughs> yeah i agree you hear that alarm well it's gone now it's fine oh it's no new york oh, yeah. for you but uh <laughs> uh hell yeah no nah, man i yeah you, <laughs> Yeah, I definitely want to get into anxious youth. Um, and I actually, it's funny that, that it kind of naturally got brought up because I wanted to ask you, because going back to the, the whole TLC show thing and how they wanted to portray it. And I've never actually thought about it until you just said it, but it's like, for those shows to work, it has to be, there has to be like a real team effort, you know, in the in the 
pre-production phase of that sh- of a show like that mm-hmm. like the director has to be like this is how we need to cover it uh you know and in down to like talking to the camera operators that were shooting it because it's like if they're if, if they're not up to speed on what your world actually is how are they gonna they're gonna just like you said try to make right. something that they think you know they're gonna be like this is this is how your life is this is how the story is without actually right. knowing it so it almost like for a show for like that to work, it's like the director would have to truly be familiar with, you know, you know, little people, you know, or if or if, if they're going to, you know what I mean? Like, and I think that's why those shows fail so often, because it's like these people are hired to make these shows who just don't have a clue. And then it's just like you said, they're just pulling from what they've seen on TV you know, uh, and our movies, um, in TV shows. And it's just like, and then that, that's what they think. Oh, that's, that's it. But it's not, you know what I mean? So right. at, at the very least, it's like, you need to have someone like, consul- like if you're a director in a show like that, or let's say you're playing a role of someone who's disabled or somebody, something like that. You should at the very, very minimum, in my opinion, have some, someone as like a consultant who's actually a part of that community who's there to right. kind of ensure that it's authentic because that I think that's really problematic honestly is creating this uh it just kind of like stigma it regurgitates that like stuff a, you know it's like yeah. a it's like yeah. the same thing over and over again I don't know it's like like for example like blind people with like sunglasses and you're standing outside and like staring yeah. up at the sky and like but it's like the reality is like 93 percent of blind people can still see something you know what i mean and it's like right it's just things like that but like that you asked like the average joe and they're gonna like oh this you tell a, a director this character is blind you know they're gonna be like all right well let's let's get him a a, a white cane and some sunglasses and uh let's have him just sit there and not really talk much <laughs> You know what I mean? Yeah, like, it's exactly. just like, it's just like, no, exactly. Cause they don't know any, they don't know any differently. And I think that's kind of what, where it's good, what we're doing. Cause we're like trying to educate and, uh, and it's good that you put your foot down. I think I respect that. Cause you could have easily been like, you know what? I want my spotlight. I want to be on this TV show and I'm just going to do, yeah, let's just do it. Let's just do whatever they tell me to do. You know what I mean? And that, that's also another thing too, is you, you get, it depends on the people who are involved and that's why i wanted to ask you because what is like the general consensus behind of like uh, like of the dwarfism community what's the general consensus of shows like you know like on tlc that are are involved little people or like like for example um like wrestling events that are only little people who are wrestling like are those is that stuff frowned upon like is there like a beef between like people who want it to partake in that and don't want to partake in that stuff. You know what I mean? Like do the people on those shows get judged? Do those, uh, wrestlers get judged or, uh, TV stars, you movie star, you know, you get my question. Like, is there like a yeah, weird so thing? It's 100%. It's 100%. It's split down the middle. Okay. There's people that are all for it and there's people that are totally against it. You know what I mean? But like, it's one of those things where at, at one point, you know, I was all against it. I was like, you know what? No way. Like, come on. Like, that's like exploiting yourself, everything. But then again, like, if those people are comfortable with doing it, like, I have, yeah. I have friends that are comfortable with themselves being called midget. I don't approve of it. My wife doesn't approve of it. And our daughter is not going to approve of it. Like, you know what I mean? Like, you know, well, let, me say, let me take that back. My daughter feels comfortable yeah, yeah, being yeah, yeah, called yeah. that, then she can be called that, but respectfully so, I don't want her to be called that, you know? And it's, like, one of those things where I, I, there are people that, like, are okay with it, and there are people that, like, are not okay with this. There's, like, people that go above and beyond to make sure that people know that they're not okay with it, and it's just, like, listen, like, if you are okay with, like, this type of living and doing that type of stuff. Yeah. Like, for example, also like dressing up as an elf or like, you know, being like an Oompa Loompa or like something like that. It's just like, it's not really my thing, 
But if it's your thing and it makes you happy and it gets you like paid to in order to live, like then so be it. Like you know, like I don't want to do that, but like you're totally open to do that. So it's yeah. like it's very like on both. There's two sides really, and like it's just like it. it that's a and honestly, that's an okay thing. Like it, it is what it is. But like when it comes to like one person, that one person should not be known. To be comfortable with either uh, side. They should be known to be comfortable with what they're actually comfortable with. Meaning, like, you know, if that person if that person is like me, where he doesn't, you know, do the wrestling and is not comfortable with, like, you know, being called midget and stuff like that, then don't automatically assume that it's okay to be like, oh, yeah, well, you're a midget. Yeah. Instead of being like, oh, no, you're like a little person or like your Vinny, you know, like, cause there's also people out there that don't even like using the word little person or dwarfism where it's just like, no, my name is Vinny. You know what I mean? Like call me by my first name or anything, you know? And like that, that, that's fine, you know? And like everybody has their ways of doing it. And I think with society, it's just like, yo, you need to like, people need to, people need to learn that and people need to understand that. And like, kind of like, realize that like yo we are humans just like everyone else we may have a disability Mm -hmm. but we still have a heart and soul like everyone else and like it's just like don't let my you know what you see on the outside like is very unique okay and it's very unique and it's beautiful but also like just because you think it's different don't make me feel different. I'm just like you. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I think that's, I think that's a huge part of it too. Yeah, I agree completely. I think everyone has the right to, uh, I guess, put some thought towards what they're comfortable with. Um, right. And uh, unfortunately that causes division, but I mean, there's no way around it. It's just like, right. you, you know, you, you can only control yourself. Um yeah, because it's like, for example, like you said, you're, you're, you know, you're Vinny first, and then you might consider yourself, you know, a father second, you know, or, or a, you know, a husband, or a uh, podcaster, a musician, you know, you're all these things, mm-hmm. who happens to be a little person, you know what I mean? Yeah. Versus exactly. like, versus, you know, you know, I'm a little person and I do this, you know, and I think that's how... Right. A lot of it should be framed, and I think, you know, um, that's how I think of it. You know, like I'm Lance, you know, who does all this stuff. I just happen to have retinitis pigmentosa, um, and I think, you know, I think that's health. That's personally healthy for me to think that way. Um, some people really want to promote, you know, a little harder than myself. You know, they'll be like, I'm, you know. Some people are more sh- like vocal advocates for things like that, like you, like you said, even like, and that's kind of another question I wanted to ask was like, for example, um, the M word, like, that's pretty new, right? Like, that, that's like a, because uh, I remember like growing up, or am I just ignorant? Because like growing up, that that was an okay, like a okay word. You would hear it on like TV and things like that. Um. Is that, is that like, like, what's, what's your take on that word? Like, do you think people know about how like offensive it is? Or do you think it's just still one of those words that's floating around in people's vocabularies? Um, and, or do you think when people say it now that it's like intentionally ignorant or do you think a lot of times it's like, uh, what do you call it? Uh, ignorance, but, uh with good intentions. I, I don't, you, you know what I mean? Right. Like, no, what, I do. I do. And like, it's, it's one of those things where I, I think, I think like, you know, ever since I was born, like I'm 34 years old now, it's like, you know, the word has always stung me. Like, you know, it's always been a little stinger uh, to always. me. Always. Where it's like, yeah. And it's like, yo, Maybe like one year, one or two year of my life, like I, I, like I was cool with it, you know, to try and like fit in with like other people that yeah. like I shouldn't have been around. But like, it's also like, I, I realized that like, you know, it hurt more than it actually like 
was, you know, and mm -hmm. I think, I think honestly, like, I think a lot of people do think it's normal to be called that, you know, and like, like an average high person, like a, people like the average person, like, you know, just like they automatically assume like, oh yeah, he's a midget. And like, it's just like, well, up until, you know, maybe like 10 years ago is when I started pe hearing people use little person more, you know what I mean? And it was just like, it was, it was honestly a breath of fresh air and, you know, who's to say that that didn't start er like earlier, like longer than 10 years ago. But like when I, I like when someone today says like midget or like, you know, something towards me or like at a store or anything or like you know it's almost like hey like you can't say that <laughs> i was like you know because whether i'm comfortable or com like not comfortable with it like it's like i would rather you call it this you know what i mean like mm -hmm. and you know in today's world like people are learning more it's taking like a lot for for people to come out and like also like ask to know what the like actual like term is or like anything yeah and it's just like when when you're in a circumstance like you know out and about and like let's say you have a little kid and it's like oh my god mommy it's a midget or like you know even an adult like you kind of have to be like hey can i just like speak with you for a sec and just tell you like you know like it's not that it's actually like I'm a little person. My name is Vinny. Like I, like or I'm Vinny. Not and like don't say anything like I'm a little person. But if you want to get like you know people a little bit more informed on everything, you explain to them like hey like midget is not a word. Like I take that as like a hate. You know and like you're you're looking at me and putting me down. You know and like everything. And so I think. You know, with, like, everything, you kind of just, like, have to inform people who are ignorant, but also trying to learn and trying to figure yeah, out. Yeah. Like, I've had I've had bosses. I've had, like, you know, friends and, like, just people at shows, just all different sorts of, like, everybody. Be like, hey, like, I grew up knowing it was midget, but it's now a little person. So I, I don't even want to call you either of those. So... I'm just going to call you by your name, but I do understand that you have the condition of dwarfism and everything. And I was like, wow, like, thanks. You know, but yeah, no, like to answer your question, like, I think like, I th honestly think that, you know, people are still learning and it is a word that has been around for a long time, you know, and people do honestly think that like right away. And they're just like, yo, well, that's what he is. And it's just like, but no, like you need to be a little bit more informed with like, hey, like this is what it is. Like, I'd rather you call me by my first name or little person or whatever else. Yeah, no, I agree, man. I think, you know, I think that's a and I feel I feel for you, you know, with all that, because I think there is a lot of innocent. I call it innocent ignorance. That's the uh -huh. word I was looking for earlier. And it's yeah. like. Because those people just don't even have a clue, and they, they just think they might even think that it's a medical term. To you know what yeah. I mean, and then but then what I also appreciate too is like your your approach to it and saying hey, hey can I talk to you for a second? Um, that word's not cool. Makes me feel you know it's I prefer this, and it's usually preferred. Like that word's actually offensive, and then if that person is you know doesn't like. If you handle it that well, that polite, and then that person's still right. using it, then that's almost intentional. And then it's not innocent anymore, and then it's almost like no. a, 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 a bad intent is now involved yeah. with that person. And that's not cool at all. And uh, and I've been in many situations like that, especially with like, yeah. you know, growing up in your 20s, going out to bars and everything with your boys and everything and like yeah as soon as that happens people will go out the door my buddies will take them out the door <laughs> and you know just be like yeah. you don't do that shit dude like you yeah. know you don't and like it, it it just that's when it got like yo like come on and like there weren't like many circumstances like that but there were like 
a few, you know, and like yeah, that that those are the ones that like you're like, damn, really, <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah, but yeah, yeah. And I think that's <laughs> relatable to people listening who aren't even, you know, who who are not, you know, you know, who 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 are not a part of the dwarfism community. I think, you know, if you listen, and you have a disability. You, we all have family members, friends. Uh, strangers say things sometimes, you know, that's just like, uh, they don't even know it, but it's like offensive. You know what I mean? And, and, right. and then, right. So it's like, like, for example, I was just, um, in London visiting my, my wife's from there and I was, we were hanging out mm-hmm. with her grandma and my uh, wife's from Manchester. That's so crazy. Oh, really? Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. That's great. Uh, we'll have to talk more about that. But it's like, yeah. yeah and uh, we were hanging out with her grandma, and she made, like, we were having, like, the classic, like, tea and biscuits kind of thing. Um, and there's, like, a commercial came on for, like, guide dogs. Um, yeah. And she just outright, just, out, like, out loud was just, like, being blind must be horrible. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. And then, and then, like, I, I don't, I'm not sure if she truly knows, like, to the extent of what my eye condition is. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. But it's like, I was just at that point, I'm just like, I didn't say anything. I was just like, yeah, she's, she's, uh, I just, I contributed to like the generational divide. Right. Um, but it's like, I could have been like, I guess my point of bringing up that story is just like, it, it happens to a lot of like subgroups, you know what I mean? And, uh, and the only way to change that is through education. But it's like at the same time, mm-hmm. sometimes when you educate, people find it annoying. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like if, if I was like, hey, that's not cool. It's like, it's like, it's all about how you handle it. You know, like I, I decided not to say anything. But if I, I guess if I were to say something, I would be like, you know, I would take your approach like, hey, you know you know, being blind is hard, but it's not horrible, you know? And like, right. Um, you would actually be surprised. You would, you would adapt and you'd be surprised and you could have a, a quite, you know, fulfilling normal life, you know, like, or I could take the approach of, Oh, that's, you shouldn't say that. That's messed up. Yeah. You know, I'm offended by that. Yeah. And then, and then, and then it's like, you're taking like, uh, to me, a more aggressive route if you go that approach. And then I think that's going to like turn the other side off more and maybe not make them as open to learning something, you know? And, but the, the, what's kind of annoying about it, I also admit too, is that like what's kind of annoying is that you have to, you have to tiptoe around it and you have to go about it in this, this like systematic approach. Like the fact that that's even a thing. It's also a little bit annoying too. It's like, all right, well, if I want to be the most effective, I got to play this, play it out this way, uh, which is something that a lot of people don't have to think about, you know. Right. Uh, but uh, yeah, that's just a similar story that I just thought you'd get a kick out of. But it's like, yeah, like it, it's different because I mean, like you know, especially with like your spouse or like you know anything like me and Sarah, my wife have the same condition. Uh, achondroplasia yeah. and like so we you know sometimes crack jokes about it and like you yeah. know when people don't understand like you know like I, even our landlord was just like oh tell us something like unique about you and like this is before we met him and like on the photo I was like it was like complete silence it was like well we're little people like you know like yeah. he's just like he went silent and he was like wait are you serious like you're like kidding and like it was like no we're completely serious you know but like it's like stuff like that where like you know even even him like he was new to meeting other little people like and yeah you know he was an average type man he's an average type man and like he and we're moving into you know we moved into a house that was everything was average height the cabinets were higher everything was literally mm-hmm. like made for you like you know what i mean like yeah, it wasn't yeah, yeah. made for us it was made for you and we do we adapted to it and so his you you come across people too as well like this who where they're concerned for your safety in certain things you know like in a situation like 
when me and my wife go to like look at an apartment or a house or anything you you almost have to like think about like okay well is the landlord going to be comfortable with me living in their you know home because we're little and yeah we do have to climb up cabinets to get somewhere we do have to climb ladders to get somewhere we do have to like use stools to get in and out of the shower and like stuff like that it's just like yeah is this person not gonna rent me the house because of that you know but luckily there's those are all things to add to literally what we were just talking about like it's like what people need to learn about people with disability is just like if that person is comfortable with doing things or, you know, has an aid or anything with with their living, you know, then it's it's okay. Like, you know what I mean? Like it's it's something that they they deal with on their own and they can get through life with and like it all should be accepted, you know. So I think, you know, with my landlord, you know, asking that question, like it was kind of just like, you know, what's unique and us saying that, like it was almost like Hey, like kind of like what you were just talking about. Like, yeah. hey, like here's our little pun and like, you know, everything. Yeah, yeah. And, and, you know, so yeah, I don't know. There's going to be times like that, I feel like, you know, and you, you kind of have that, have to have those, I guess. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> to get the light, light of situations sometimes. But yeah. <laughs> yeah. And some people, some people love like teaching, you know, others. And some people are just like, like I'm more introverted. So it's kind of like, and I kind of, I'm, I'm pretty, I avoid confrontation. Yeah. Um, so sometimes when I'm in those scenarios, I, I really dislike it because it's like, it's not my personality type. You know no. what I mean? Yeah. No, like exactly. my style is to do this podcast and just like talk about it. And if you listen, oh shit, I've learned something. Like I'm not right. the kind of person to just go around correcting people and, you know, hey, you should, you know. So, but, you know, I do, sometimes you, it just comes with the territory. Unfortunately, when you have a disability, you're kind of forced to do it, even though you don't want to sometimes. You know what I mean? No, exactly. Exactly, yeah. exactly. And, uh, but, but, uh, yeah, man, we're almost an hour in, so let's, let's get into your podcast. Uh, okay. Um, um, so like, uh, you have the Anxious Youth Podcast, where you got about 13 episodes, I think. Yeah, so the Anxious Youth Podcast, um, so anxious youth is like uh we'll say it's like this it's like the headquarters and then yeah. what i'm what i'm working on right now is like the podcast which is anxious youth presents a day in my mind so yeah it's it's about you know just like i, I think we're yeah we're 14 episodes in now and um we actually had a baby last month, so I've just like <laughs> been on dad duty since yeah. then. So I haven't been able to. I have episodes that are backlogged that I'm going to be releasing in the next few weeks. When you say but, we, um, or is this is it your you and your wife doing this podcast, or is it or? Uh, yeah, yeah, we because the ones so I've heard run, are uh, just with you. So so mainly the podcast is just me, but yeah, yeah. the company is me and her. So oh, we run tight. like we do, you know, like TikToks and like. Um, reels and all that stuff and the mm -hmm. Instagram we make like you know tiles and everything yeah. but it's just like um, we really like to like hone in on like the stuff that we've gone through with anxiety and like everything but also talk to you know friends and family and also people on the outside just to learn about like what everyone has gone through and almost normalize it you know because yeah, yeah. everyone has different situations but at the end of the day it seems like more and more people are coming about and they're coming out about their anxieties and yeah. mental illnesses, their, you know, depression and like PTSDs and like everything, which is like something as a, in my youth, I was so scared to talk about. And it was yeah. something like I dealt with panic attacks I dealt with like, you know, also being a little person, but also like, you know, being, a kid in high school who wanted to be in the popular group, but like didn't know if you were cool enough, everything, like typical stuff. And like, you know, it, it, it just like when I, when we came up with the name, it just like, it really hit me. Like, I was like, damn, like a lot of my youth, I was anxious, you know? And yeah. like, I didn't, 
I didn't have a clear mind on certain things. And like, it was just like, what the hell, you know? So like some of those things, some of those anxieties, you know, still stick with me on certain topics. And like, those are things that like, I need to talk about within the podcast. Like a day in my mind is just like, you know, different, different issues. Like, you know, that I go through day to day that like people also go through as well. Like, you know, with yeah. like, let's say, you have a stigma of like asking for help. That's one of my biggest stigmas. I have an, I have a stigma for asking for help and I want to talk about it through the podcast and also like hear people's feedback about it and also know if like, yeah. you know, if what I'm saying helps you, but also like get your feedback as if like it would help me too, you know? So it's just like, yeah, yeah. it's just an open conversation where we can talk about this stuff. And like, it's like, you know, with the with the fundamentals of social media, you can do anything with it. And the way that I would that I want to see it go is just like normalize the conversation of it. That's it. I just want to yeah. normalize the conversation across the board of mental health, disability, you know, just everything. And make everyone feel like they're one. You know what I mean? They're one with the earth. They're just like everyone else and like don't let anything stop you from living out your life you know because it's a hard world out there but we have each other at the end of the day you know and that's what's crazy <laughs> yeah i know that's a good point like um yeah and everyone go definitely go check out anxious youth i'll have a link you know in the show description um but yeah it's like you i think people forget that you know it's like that's one of the I would I would just be honest it's a disadvantage of 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 someone who has a disability is like you have normal life anxiety which everyone has mm-hmm. but then you also have like anxieties that are attached to your disability you know what I mean mm-hmm. like for example my anxiety is like I still got to pay bills I got you know husband duties I got apartment cleaning duties I got yeah. you know friends <laughs> family you know uh, I got this podcast, which surprisingly takes up a ton of my time. Right. Uh, and, um, but on top of that, it's like, I got to factor in like, okay, you know, you know, majority of people with RP, what I have are considered legally blind by age 40. I'm 31. Uh, uh, I think I'm 31. <laughs> Maybe I'm 32. Now I'll be 32 this year. That's funny. I don't there know my go. birth. I don't know my age. <laughs> but it's like, see, that's what happens. But it's like, anyways, I, you know, am I going to be, that means like, according to statistics, I'm going to be legally blind by 40. I work as a video editor. You know, what does that yeah. mean for my career? Like, am I going to hit a brick wall? You know, like, right. if I have a kid, is that going to affect what I can and can't do as a father? You know, like all these things will pop into my brain. Right. You know, which if you have a kid, you're going to have anxieties anyways. Like you're going to, and I'm assuming you're like, that's anxious enough right there. But then you throw in a disability, it just throws like a wrench in all and everything. And, uh, I think, I think that's, if I had to make, uh, just a guess, I have a hunch that a lot of most disabled people have, um, would probably consider themselves anxious, mm. you know, cause it, this just comes with the territory. Um, and it probably, you know, increases social anxiety too, because like, you know, for example, if I go somewhere and I'm not familiar and it's dark, I'll be mm-hmm. like, ah, oh, man, I might, am I going to run into someone? And, you know, am I going to be able right. to find my seat? Like if I go to, you know, to a restaurant, like, am I going to, on the way to the bathroom, am I going to run into someone or trip over something? So it's like, sometimes you avoid social situations where like, Hey, you want to go to a concert? And I'm like, oh, yeah, maybe. Is it like, uh, like we have lawn seats, you know? Right. And I'm like, ah, I mean, if I, if I, that means like I can't get up and go to the bathroom because there's no way I'm going to find you on right. the lawn when I leave. You know no what I mean? Way. So, so <laughs> it's like, I have to think that, you know, think about things, a few extra layers and that's just my examples. And, um, that's but yeah, when it, when, it, when, when it comes to anxiety, it's like, it does. I feel like there's an added element to it that 
is derivative of your disability and like things like that. And it's, it definitely doesn't help. I'll say that. No. <laughs> you know. No. no and no. Uh, definitely doesn't help. Um, all right, man. So we, you know, we talked about anxious youth. We talked about a lot of things. Is there anything you want to promote? Like, I'll have a link in the show description of where people can listen. But you have like an Instagram handle, website, or anything like that that you want to. Dude, um, just go to at anxious youth. Uh, the Instagram. We're also on TikTok. You can check me out on mine um, yeah. at Vinny Rapolo, and yeah, just see what life yeah. is all about. You know, living as a little person, but also like an anxious little person, a person who's going about life every day, becoming a new dad, and, um, a husband. You know, musician. your baby's adorable. By the way. Yeah, thank you, man. <laughs> she's yeah. great. She's the best. She's been keeping us up, but she's getting better you know um but like uh, yeah just you know life is life and like here we are we're doing it man we're doing it i like that life is life yeah. and here we are yeah exactly <laughs> right on man Th- i think that's it man we covered Dude, that was dope uh, that was so so, so sick. much and uh that was so sick yeah dude it's cool I- i'm glad we're in touch and uh Look forward to staying in touch, but uh, take care, man. Okay.